The latest rumors surrounding Patrick Laine and the Capitals, would he be an upgrade? I'll discuss next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked on Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holney. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the Caps. Should they stay? Should they go? As we know, the Capitals play in D.C., but there is plans in place to move the team to Virginia. Is that a good idea? We'll talk about that in the show a little bit later. We will talk about how it is a Capitals Fan Friday where we'll hear your thoughts on the Capitals. But just to get it going here, the latest rumors, the latest rumblings surrounding Patrick Laine. Uh, One of the things that we know for sure is the Capitals are looking to address the top six. Brian McClellan has spoke about that since last summer. Uh, Would Patrick Laine be a good option? And if you are an everydayer of the show, you know I spoke about this earlier, but there are recent rumblings here. We know that he is a forward, and the Capitals are three points out of a wild card spot. Would he ultimately be uh, the top six forward that Brian McClellan was referring to? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, He has had kind of an up and down season for Columbus this season, but the Capitals being three points out, um, they need a person to try and get them over the top. And how would I look at Patrick Liney? Am I going to say that he is going to be the piece that is going to save the team this year? Not exactly. Perhaps. Maybe if the Capitals got some more players included uh, around the trade deadline, but I think it would be maybe a good building block for the future. Uh, is Patrick Line the answer? Elliot Friedman spoke about this on the 32 Thoughts podcast as well. That's when I spoke about it before, but recently TSN's Darren Dreger on Insider Trading said Dreger reported that the Blue Jackets and GM Yarmo Kekalainen are willing to listen to trade offers on both both Patrick Line and defenseman Ivan Provorov. Um, I don't, we won't talk about the Provorov uh, portion of it, but Patrick Line in particular, I think would be a good upgrade. But the thing about it that makes me a little bit uncertain is that he's been a healthy scratch and he's kind of lost favor with Columbus. And uh, Columbus is another team that is on the outside looking in. And I think they're desperately trying to move out uh, pieces that they don't perceive is a part of their future. And ultimately, they would like to stockpile assets that's going to help them next year. They're not going to make it to the playoffs this year. Line has had a bumpy road this season in Columbus, and they would be willing to listen to offers on Line. He's been injured and a healthy scratch at points this season. So again, there is cause of concern. It kind of is similar to my reservations about Kuzmenko as well. Uh, I spoke about him on this show as well is uh, these maybes, these injured players, these guys that are healthy scratched, they always kind of put up red flags for me. What about it? Uh, Why is Patrick Liney? Why was he healthy scratch? Why has he kind of lost favor with the Columbus Blue Jackets? You know, You could say the same thing about uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov. You know that there's going to be GMs out there. You know that there's going to be teams. There's going to be fans that say, hey, 
If this Kuznetsov guy is so great, then why do the Capitals want to trade him? The same thing kind of goes for Patrick Laine. He has only nine points, six goals, three assists, which is quite a drop from the 52 points, 22 goals, 30 assists. He put up just 55 games last year. Um, so 22 goals, if the Capitals could get just a fraction of that, I would say that that would be quite a substantial upgrade. Even if they could get 22, that would be huge for the Capitals right now. Um, and just taking a look at it, there is quite an upside on there. And sometimes when you look at these players, just a change of scenery is what the doctor ordered. If he changed uh, zip codes from Columbus to D.C., potentially he could be that player he once was. Uh, he has been injured since December 14th after fracturing his clavicle against the Maple Leaf. So that isn't his fault, but he is making a return from a fractured clavicle. And, um, you know, it just seems like there is a chemistry issue. I think that he uh, isn't in the best of spirits playing on the Columbus Blue Jackets. He even said as much as saying that uh, him get, being a healthy scratch was one of the most humiliating things that's ever happened to him. Listen, Patrick Laine is a top-tier talent. I think when put in the right situation, would the Capitals, in fact, be that right situation? Laine is in the second year of a four-year extension that he signed in 2022 and carries an 8.7 million AAV. Um, so you take a look at it. You know, it's not going to come cheap, all of that. But if the Capitals got him and maybe wanted to extend him at some point, if there was sort of chemistry, Listen, I mean, Laine is one of the more intriguing names out there. Uh, when you hear some of the other names that are closely associated with this team, uh, you know, they're at the end of the day, they're just rumors. But when you hear the other players rumored, most of them don't have the skill set or the history or the pedigree that Patrick Laine has. This might not necessarily mean he will take the Capitals over the top, more like a piece to help them in the future. So, Taking a look at Liney, uh, it is interesting that both Darren Dreger and Elliot Friedman, two premier insiders, all linked uh, 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 Patrick Liney with the Capitals. Uh, so you know what they say, sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, if you have two big name insiders mentioning a particular player, I'm not going to say it's a sure thing, but it's interesting that they are both on the same page. Um, so it would be an interesting thing uh, how he's going to perform the rest of the season. Uh, it might be something that is done at the trade deadline, uh, something of that nature. But as we took a, take a look at it, it would be a maybe. Uh, and that's all you can hope for. And just kind of take a look at his history that historically he has been a great player. Could the Capitals, could DC, could Spencer Carberry, could he be... Uh, the Patrick Line whisperer and get him back to where he once was. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about should the Capitals stay or leave? An interesting question is a lot of people are upset about the fact that the Capitals might be leaving the district for Virginia. I'll discuss coming up. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data. And a matching engine that helps you find a quality candidate fast. Ditch the busy work using Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Listen, if you are in HR, you don't have time to be wading through old paper applications. You need Indeed. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast locked on capitals indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply you need to hire you need indeed The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed 
when you place a $5 bet, and listen, my team is not in the playoffs anymore, but I can still have skin in the game with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet, that's $150 in bonus bets. Win or lose, the app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to play, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Capitals have called D.C. home for quite some time, but now the, the rumors out there and the framework, I guess, is in place for the Capitals to move to Virginia, to Potomac Yards. And if you are not from the area uh, area around there, it might seem like, well, you are moving from D.C. to Virginia. That must be quite a great distance. Uh, it isn't really that far, all things considered. There are, you know, things to be concerned about as far as transit, how you're going to get out there, parking, that kind of thing. And ultimately, why abandon a place that you have called home for so long? Um, I know that it is not Ted Leonsis's job to be concerned about the businesses that surround Capital One Arena, but you have to figure that there are going to be losers in that situation if, in fact, the Capitals take up their tent and head on over to Virginia. Listen, it's a bustling area filled with restaurants, bars, that type of thing, that there will be losers in that scenario. Now, listen, I know that the Mystics will end up staying there. Uh, and ultimately, I don't think I know that they don't have quite uh, the draw that the Capitals and the Wizards have. But that is what it's slated to be right now. That the Capitals and the Wizards, the two biggest names at Capital One Arena, might be packing up and heading out to Potomac Yards in Virginia. Uh, and you, this is all scheduled to take place tentatively uh, by 2028. Uh, the framework is in place to move the team already out there. So it's not, you know, too far of a stretch. You know, it, the funny thing is, is it's changed from rumors to a framework in place to what seems like a pretty short order. Uh, a lot of fans are against it, and some of them have even staged protests. And, you know, a lot of people love the area uh, where Capital One Arena is. They like the culture. They like uh, everything about it. Uh, it's, you know, a good situation where there's parking nearby. And it's the heart uh, of D.C. there. So why, you know, take up the stakes and move your tent out of D.C. and head on out? Well, Ted Leonsis says that, says that there's better opportunities uh, for training facilities. He said it's going to be a better uh, experience for the fan. Uh, but I think that there's probably more of a motive there as well. Leonza says, I certainly acknowledge concerns heard from passionate members of the community. I look forward to hearing from those who are concerned working to address any issues raised in determining why I believe this is the best decision for our fans. Our thousands of full and part-time employees, the teams, the athletes, our partners, and the DMV. And then he rolled off all kinds of statistics about who comes to Capital One Arena, the, the fans that come from Virginia, the fans that come from Maryland, and then the fans, of course, from D.C. And he was trying to make a case that a lot of the fans already come from Virginia. He wants to establish uh, to provide the fans the best experience, best for the fans and for the athletes. Listen, I think it's going to be a top tier thing. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, that change is just kind of hard for fans. And being that I don't make it to a lot of the games uh, in D.C., I guess I don't have, you know, the same feeling as the fans that attend the games on a regular basis. Uh, this will give us the best chance to be successful on the ice, on the court, on the airwaves, and in business settings, Leonsis said. Still going through various legislative processes. Um, I, you know, he says that he wants to listen to local businesses. He wants to listen to the fans at the end of the day, but does he? Uh, I think that ultimately his mind is made up and I think that he wants to move the team. He is just kind of, you know, saying I'm going to listen to the people. But I think that ultimately if the framework is in place, it would be quite 
an about face if he pulled up stakes and, and left or if the team stayed in D.C. Uh, and then the big concerns is traffic in and out of the facility, uh, getting out to Potomac Yards at the new facility. Um, is there you know, a lot of public transit that will take people out there? What will that look like? A lot of the fans are concerned, and you should factor in the fans' uh, per perspective there. If you take a look at it, they are the ones, they're the butts in the seats. They are the ones that are paying for the beer, for the jerseys, for all the merchandise uh, at Capital One Arena, not to mention the, 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 the people that are buying the tickets to the event. If it's a Capitals game, if it's a Wizards game, whatever the case may be, and they're paying a lot of money to see their favorite team. You should factor in how they feel more significantly. Um, I think that, you know, Ted Leonsis, of course, has great vision. He is a billionaire and you don't get to be a billionaire by being a dummy. He is an intelligent man. But uh, the move out to uh, Potomac Yards, I think that, you know, it's one of the things that I guess we won't really know how it's going to be until it happens, because I would be most surprised if Ted Leonsis uh, changed course, where all of a sudden he's like, you know, I heard all of you and you're right I'm keeping it right here in D.C. And, uh, you know, some people have had said some disparaging things about Capital One Arena. When I was there, I thought it was a great facility. I know that there's more state-of-the-art facilities out there. If you take a look at the one out in Seattle, the, the new one that the Islanders are playing in, there's a great one uh, up in Edmonton as well. I get that. It's, the ni it's nice to have the new shiny toy. Uh, but ultimately for me, I think the Capital One is okay, and he still plans on on addressing and making changes to it and upgrading it a bit because there are still going to be teams playing at Capital One, uh, but their biggest draw, the Caps and the Wizards, will be leaving. Um, so a tough position for the fans to be in. I think at this point it's going to happen. It's all about just accepting it at this point. How difficult that might be that, that you know they might move, and that might mean uh, it's not going to be nearly as convenient uh, for a lot of the fans. Monumental sports and entertainment has always been about the entire DMV. Between the Capitals and the Wizards, 44% of fans who attend games are from Virginia, 41% are from Maryland, and 15% are from D.C. You see the argument that he's trying to say. He's saying that a majority of the fans are already coming from Virginia. It's an interesting argument to make, and I think that the, the people that are the most upset probably maybe aren't necessarily the fans. It is the businesses that surround Capital One Arena, and I hear that. If I owned a business that surrounded Capital One Arena right now, and I heard that you know the fan bases for the Capitals and the Wizards is going to be leave uh, town, would I be concerned? You better believe I will. Some of those businesses will probably not remain after this, and I know, again, it's not... Leonsis's job to worry about all of that, but he should at least take it into consideration uh, to be a bit of a humanitarian at the end of the day to take people's feelings into consideration. Um, but, you know, it's a tough position if it's an upgrade. Uh, I kind of want to hear your thoughts. Fans from DC, hit me up on Twitter at DanCaps218 or at Locked On Caps, or you can always hit me up on Subtext or YouTube. What are your thoughts? about the Capitals leaving D.C. for Potomac Yards. Are you for it? Are you against it? And I will talk about that on next week's episode. All right, so coming up here after the break, it is a Caps Fan Friday. We'll get kind of the pulse of the Capitals fans. How are you feeling, Capitals fans, about how this team is doing? I'll discuss coming up. Patient drive and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers 
All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So on this podcast this week, I have kind of railed on the Capitals about their inability to win these games that are must-win games. And how have they fared in these must-win games? Well, they have not won any of them. This is a crucial juncture for the Capitals, three points out of a wild card spot. And they are kind of teetering uh, between being in it in the whole race in the Metro Division and being out of it and already building for next year. So let's take a look at uh, some of the comments from some of the fans out there. I sent out a message earlier, and you can always do this. Uh, just send me a message at minutecastmedia at gmail.com, or you can always at me on Twitter or uh, send me a direct message, a video about a minute long, and I can share that in an upcoming podcast. But let's take a look at your thoughts. What do you ultimately think, Capitals fans, about how this team is going. So let's take a look uh, take a look at a message here. This was an audio message here. All right, Dan, regarding your tweet, thoughts on the Caps, keep it short. This team is not a playoff team. They need to start their plan for the future. Got to move these contracts. I mean, anybody but Ovi, get the guys up in Hershey, start developing. I mean, it's sell, sell, sell. I don't think it's necessarily Carberry's fault. I think just the team on the ice, too slow. Uh, not enough goal scoring. I mean, there's just absolutely no reason for them to try and get in the playoffs. They would get ran out of the building in four games if they were able to sneak in. Um, so just plan for the future. Move these contracts, um, accumulate draft capital. Uh, I mean, we just we just need to change and plan for the future. And that's kind of the sentiment for a lot of people out there is building for the future. Um, and, you know, it's a common uh, thread to have there that the Capitals uh, may not make it to the playoffs. What have we seen indicated that they are capable of making it to the playoffs? So let's take a look at a couple of your other comments here as well, as people had quite uh, an interesting take on it here. Uh, Soren here said, when I asked about the state of the Capitals and how you feel, he said toxic. Uh, we take a look at Jamal. He said, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that this team should be sellers at the trade deadline. Um, so that is kind of the thought. That is the sentiment from Capitals fans out there right now is, you know, it's we're kind of moved past the point this year that we think that the Capitals are going to be uh, contenders that, you know, ultimately we have to start building for the future. Is that your thought? That's kind of been my thought uh, here the last couple of days. I've kind of held out hope, you know, when they played St. Louis and they dropped that game against St. Louis, they dropped a game against Minnesota. They dropped a game against the avalanche at a crucial point of the season where we can't reel it in. We can't say that, you know, um, you know, hopefully, they're, they can go on a winning streak or, you know, maybe they don't lose too many games. If the Capitals lose too many games now, they will be out of it. They will be sellers. They won't be buyers uh, once again. So if you take a look at it, um, if that is what the case is, then I will have to accept it. You as Capitals fans will have to accept it and, you know, kind of have your eyes up and on the future. What kind of moves is Brian McClellan going to make in the offseason? Or, you know, potentially at the trade deadline, we saw what happened with Rasmus Sandin, a contributor on the blue line, what's considered to be a big piece for the future. And, and just take a look at it that way. I think that that is the safe approach. I think that I would tamper expectations for this season unless something absolutely crazy happened. And they just went on a tear and won a bunch of games. And listen, in this scenario, I would love nothing more than to be wrong in this case. I would love for the Capitals to just win a bunch of games and catapult up to in the Metro Division, but I ultimately don't think that that is going to be the case. Um, these last few games have left me questioning a lot of things. Why didn't we do more in the offseason? Why, Brian McClellan, when you said you wanted to address the top six, why didn't you do it? And I know that there has to be a dance partner out there, but uh, you got to think that sometimes you got to make the tough move. Maybe you got to move a player that all the fans love if it means a return. Um, but, you know, with that said, it's kind of a, a tightrope to walk because I don't necessarily like mortgaging the farm either. Um, and I don't think that that would have ever been a scenario anyway, unless the Capitals were ultimately still in it, still in the fight. 
Uh, but tough questions remain for the Capitals. Brian McClellan, uh, Spencer Carberry, the, the players themselves, is can they do it? There is not a lot of time. Some would say it's already too late. They must win big games, and it starts against the Dallas Stars and then regroup and hopefully hit it hard after the All-Star break. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are ultimately what makes this show successful. Listen, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.